All right, well, today we are back to work on the C6Z06 competition drift car build. We have been working on this thing, hammering out some projects to make sure that we get it done by the next season of Clutch Kickers, which is the drift series that we're gonna be competing in with this car. Now, we have a little over four months, but really we need to cut that down to three so we have some test time. And what that means is, as much as that sounds like a decent bit of time, that will come out quicker than you know it. If you think you got a lot of time, you will soon run out of time. So that's the mentality we've got with this car. We need to be working on it as often as possible. Now, the tough thing is we're waiting on a lot of parts. We're waiting on a lot of the drivetrain stuff, some plumbing, wiring, etc. Now we have a lot of the big important parts, but we can't really use them till we get the other parts to attach those parts to those parts, if you know what I'm saying. So while we're waiting, there are a handful of projects we need to knock out. The most important on that list being the motor mount on this side. So there's no problem with the motor mount on the other side. The, the stock one fits, it does have a solid mount insert, but it's kind of the stock design. However, on this side, the dry stump is in the way of using just the stock style motor mount. So the people who built this car originally, if you're unfamiliar with this, we basically bought this car as an unfinished project. There's a lot of question marks. Uh, some of these things don't make a lot of sense. And the motor mount is one of them. I can only guess and hope that they built this mount, I'll have to show it to you when I get this side of the turbo kit off, as a temporary fixture mount, and then we're gonna mount it some other way. It did come with like a, a bit of a motor plate setup and stuff, so I'm hoping that's what it was because there's no way you could run the car with this mount. So it's something we absolutely have to redo, and the engine's position is gonna kind of dictate everything else, like the turbo kit. So we're rebuilding this entire turbo kit. It's one of those things, it's gonna be easier to redo it than try to work around it. But again, before we do that, we need to get the engine position sorted with the new motor mount that we are gonna build. Once that's done, we need to actually pull the engine out for a short short period of time to work on stuff in the engine bay. So we got a lot of work ahead in this episode, and I need to quit jibber jabbering so we can get to it. Let's get to work. So here is the motor mount in question. So one, it's only going to two of the four bolts on the block, but that's uh, the least of its problems. It's two pieces of bar stock welded together. And then it's just through bolted to the subframe with these two little bolts. Now you can see where they tried to weld it to the subframe. I'm assuming they didn't realize that this was magnesium, not aluminum. So for whatever reason on the Z06, they used a magnesium front subframe instead of aluminum, so you're not gonna be welding aluminum to it. But uh, yeah, so that's what we're working with right now. And the engine can move around a good bit. So this is kind of what the stock mount looks like, and you can kind of see the problem with how far back the dry sump comes. So we've gotta figure out a way to build a mount that goes around the dry sump, around where our fittings are gonna go and everything. It's, it's gonna be a challenge, so. Let's get to it. All right, now the engine's completely naked. <laughs> we're not gonna be using that intake manifold anyway. We're going back to the billet since we're keeping it turbo. But we got the whole turbo kit off, we got the intake manifold off. Now we can start working on our motor mount. So here is the stock motor mount bracket. And this is the motor mount that would go in there as a solid replacement instead of, you know, having a rubber or a poly deal solid. So I know some people make this work with dry sumps, but this is a pretty big dry sump. You can see this is gonna bolt on about like that, but further down, it's gonna be all up in the dry sumps business. <laughs> like it is completely, it's the wrong way. If we could have, this exact mount, the opposite, where the two bolts were on the left side, and then it came down to here, that might work. So, point is, the stock setup's not gonna work. I think we're gonna have to build an entire, from scratch, motor mount. We might be able to tie this in, but even that, I'm skeptical of, because we're about an inch off the bolt hole there. 
So if we cut most of it out, it might be able to slide it over enough. But we'll see, there's a bunch of different ways we can tackle this. I wanna get this mount off and then kind of see what we're working with. We got that mount out. The dry sump pan is touching that subframe. We'll put a shim under there. Make sure we have clearance there. I don't want to be sitting on that, rubbing on that. So I think my idea is we really need to arch out, land it right around here on a flat plate, and then have the bolt hole to the inside of it. And that should give us plenty of room. We, I mean, we want to stay tucked up kind of as close as we can to give us room for wine routing and turbo stuff. But we need to start by making a bracket that's gonna bolt to the block where the stock motor mount will go. It looks like it's just, a, they show the rod to give you reference. I think it's just the one do the holes, put these transfer punches in, punch them through the cardboard, and then use a regular punch to punch them out in steel, cut out the gist of the shape, and then trim it. Because it's real tight down here. Like these bottom bolt holes, right under it, it's the block. So it can't be much past the bolt hole, basically. He tried to chop her arm off. I really do need to get a drill press. Just haven't had room for one. Yeah. All right, we used the transfer punches to transfer punch onto this, but I couldn't get this one to hit with all the other ones. So we got 78 by 112. These uh, transfer punches, I get them on Amazon, are the bee's knees for doing stuff like this. You basically thread them into the hole and then it's a little punch in. So if you have two, three holes, like we have here, at four holes, thread one into each hole, tap with a hammer, Bob's your uncle, as they say. <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, drill this out. know if there's enough room to get the curve in there I mean there might be it's just because the plate right like there's my hole so I want to go past that hole a little bit but then the thickness of the plates gonna start to become a factor too we'll get there we'll get there
So. All right, we've got the engine leveled out left to right, front to back, and clocked correctly because with just that one mount on, you can rotate it like this. So we've got all of that sorted. We've got it shimmed up to get us there, which works out as well because that keeps the dry sump pump off of the subframe. So to get it level, we should now be off the subframe with the dry sump pump anyway, so that's good. We got both our plates done. So we've got a plate that bolts to the engine here. All four bolts went in nice, even that one back there. I thought that one was gonna be a bit of a struggle with the fittings and the pump and such, but we got that in. And then we got our bottom plate down here, which bolts in through those through bolts. Now we had to be, kind of keep this as small as possible because we've gotta get a kind of oddball fitting to go in here in 90. Obviously, there's no way we're getting a fitting on there with it going straight down at the subframe. So we need as much height here as we can get. Uh, so the point is, I'm pretty happy with our two plates. Now we just need to go from A to B, from one plate to the other. So I've got a couple of ideas on how to do this. I think the simpler route might actually work for this, but we really won't know until we start uh, cutting stuff and seeing how it all ends. So let's take some measurements, make some cuts, and uh, see what we can come up with. So I can either use two of these, you know, cut this down, use two, or one of these. This stuff's really thick wall. I'm leaning towards one of these. All right, well this piece of tube just happens to already be cut at almost exactly the angle we need. The cut is pretty rough though, so I wanna clean it up on the belt grinder first before we measure to cut this to size. Did you see that? This big old spider just crawled out of that tube as I was cutting it. Big old spider. You Can you see him? Dude, <laughs> I'm glad I caught that on video. All right, well, lesson learned, always A, look into tubing, B, blow it out with the air gun if it's been sitting around for a while. I mean, I've had this this piece of tubing since I built my first welding cart. This is what I built it out of. So, I mean, it's been sitting around for a while, but geez, homeboy just crawled out mid grind. <laughs> what a bad time for it too. Probably got upset. All the noise, didn't like it. So we're gonna cut this a little long and try to work it in there. I have a feeling we're gonna be able, we're gonna need to take some of this angle out and put it opposite in here to get our clearance where we need it, but we'll see. This kind of stuff, it's tough to know without just kind of trying it. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so 44, 45 degrees is what we need to basically match the angle from the mount and then go to the flat where the lower plate is but that's gonna put us too tight to the dry sump. So we really need about 20 degrees down here and then 25 up here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this at 25, maybe closer to 30, and then get ourselves a light angle down here, make it a little long, and we can grind it down to shape because we, we only really get one shot at this and we can't, we're not gonna know the exact dimension until we've got it in there.
Let's see if I got it right. Ah, oh, so close. So we got it right on the length. We got it right on the angles. We're just gonna have to scallop it around this dry sump. Just the tiniest bit. I mean, we could probably get away with doing it like that, but it's overhanging on both plates. So I'm gonna do a test scallop on the too short piece to make sure the way I wanna do it's gonna work well. This is one of the cool things about the Ameribraid belt grinder here. We're gonna use a two inch diameter roller. So this just pops in here. Get our belt. All right, so our shorter scrap piece might actually work once we get it slid in a little more. We just need to notch that, bring that notch a little further down. It's deep enough, it just needs to come further down. All right, well, would you look at that? Fits, fits. I gotta bring it down here to show you actually how, how nice and tight it all is. It's a little tight to this nut. You can see it kind of kicks it back a little bit. I'm gonna weld the nuts to this plate as well so the bolts will come in from the bottom because this is gonna end up I'm gonna try to put it somewhere right in the middle of this bracket on the engine. So it's gonna end up right next to that nut. So that way we can just boom, zap them out from the bottom because, you know, if we had studs going the other way, this has to tilt back and then come out. That's why I made this plate as narrow as it was because we're gonna need to be able to kind of slide the whole thing back and then tilt it out to get it out without pulling the engine out. So all stuff you gotta take into consideration. So I'm gonna take that nut back out, notch it. I need to go ahead and weld some sort of plate in here. Basically get this thing ready to weld in, get the nut ready to weld in, and then we'll tack all this stuff together in the car. This is one of those things we absolutely have to tack in the car, because the measurements, the positioning, it's all critical, like absolutely critical. So we'll check the engine one more time before we tack it, but everything's looking good. Just gotta finish everything up. And it comes out. Look at that.
right, here it is. Came out pretty good. I might add a little gusset here and one here. There's just not really a lot of room to wear, uh, to weld gussets on here. And this, this stuff is so thick, quarter inch plate. And then this is 3 16 thick. So it's pretty beefy as is. And most of the load is directly down on it. The only way it could fall off is if it squished the whole thing out, which is pretty unlikely. It's not like it's welded on like this. So I don't know, I don't know that there's even a need for them, but I wanna make sure it fits first before worrying about adding more stuff to it. Looks good though, pretty happy with it. Satisfying little project. done and dusted engine fits good it's still in level we can kind of move it around a little bit if we need to when we get the trans on but it's pretty much in the same spot it was when i did all the test fitting for the trans so all that should be copacetic i hope but yeah i've got to do a little bit more clearancing down here just touching the pump we don't want it rubbing against that so i'll have to scallop this just a little further down probably put another little plate in it uh, but all in all really happy with how it came out all the bolts go in by hand, you don't have to fight any of them to get them lined up, which, I mean, that's crucial. That's the biggest thing. So, yeah, uh, Jose has been working on templates for plating over the firewall. So this is really important. Younger Taylor would not have found this important. Not at all. Probably would have just left them wide open. Two things made me realize that it's important. Um, one, my Miata, fully sealed firewall, except where the steering shaft goes through. I had to angle it over to clear the header and there's a hole like this big where I had to take the rubber grommet out because it was binding up. If you've been around for a while, you remember that saga of the car not self-steering. But point is, hole this big, you feel the hot air coming through. If you're driving around, uh, you just like, it's literally like you've got the heater on and there's no HVAC. Thing two, my Sephiro catching fire and nothing happening. <laughs> On the inside, Matt Schulman's car catching fire and a lot of things happening on the inside because he didn't have a sealed firewall. So it's really, really important. You know, if you have any catastrophic failure and there's a big old fire in here, you got all these open holes, all that's coming right into the cap. So point is, this is very important. We need to make full cover plates and seal them. So he got one for the brake master there that we're not using anymore. But that's where I assume the cabin air filter would go. There's one more back there. We're gonna plate the whole thing up and then worry about our pass-through holes after instead of trying to weave some for holes. But point is, to do this more easily, we need to pull the engine out. engine is out we got it on this this is actually the stand that the engine came on when the guy who had this car before me who started building this car uh bought it and he, he gave me the stand with the engine and i kept it so i was like ah, oh, one day it'd be nice to pop an ls on it if i'm storing it and it just it literally dawned on me after i pushed this thing in the corner on the dolly set i had this sitting in the container so much more legit way to store it 
Might not have gone through the trouble if it was gonna be on here for a day or two, which was my original plan, and that may still be the plan, but there is a decent bit we gotta do while this engine is out. So, Josue has virtually all his templates made. So you can see there's one there that'll be two piece. This one for where the brake master cylinder would be. This one for whatever that was, AC lines and stuff. That's probably where the cabin air filter was. This one's real complicated. That's gonna be real challenging. Multiple compound bins, been there, been there, been there, and two piece, but he did a really good job making all those templates. So all of those are done. So now the engine's out, it'll be a lot easier to make them out of aluminum and then drill, rivet, and panel bond them in. We couldn't really do that with the engine in. And then while it's out, we might as well paint up some of this stuff where there's no paint, paint the anti-intrusion bars, just make it all look nice while we have the opportunity while the engine's out. So I also have a couple things maybe to do to the engine. I've got to at least put the, the, the damper bolt in. I don't know why they didn't put that in. I need to put these bolts in for the damper shell. I might weld on an oil drain to the timing cover so I can use the back fitting there instead of an oil drain as vacuum to the valve covers. I don't know, I gotta figure some of that stuff out. But I've been kind of cranking on figuring out lines and fittings. There is an insane amount in this car. So I made this very poorly drawn diagram of the engine bay, the radiator, and the interior. As I said, very poorly drawn. <laughs> but that gives me an idea. I have a list already, but this is a better way to visualize it and make sure I'm not missing anything. Because again, there's probably three times more fittings and a lot more than that. There's f probably five times more fittings and lines on this car than any car I've ever built. So it's a lot to try to keep track of. So ah, point is, it's dark out. Uh, I'm really happy with the progress. Glad we got the engine out. It's obviously a piece of cake. Happy with the templates. Uh, I'm excited to make them out of aluminum and get this firewall sealed up and just uh, keep on trucking. So it's nice to have good direction on this car now. And, stuff we can do until the parts get here, which has more stuff we can do. So anyway, point is, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. I hope to see you guys next time. For now, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing.